Sponsored by Fletcher's Flies. And by Salt Rights. Aim, click, share. What's going on everyone? This is Kantanaka of Wish for Fish. And today I'm going to be talking about matching the hatch. Or sometimes the best match is not even a hatch at all. For instance, um, you know, there's a lot of things that just fall in the water, especially during the summer. You got a lot of terrestrials, you know, sometimes it is a spinner fall, which isn't necessarily a hatch, but it's when they come back, lay eggs on the water, and you know, you have spent flies on the water. Basic entomology is really important. I mean, you don't have to be a scientist, but knowing just some little bit of basics is going to help out in the long run, for sure. Uh, I'm going to show you where you could find the aquatic insects and how you could find the aquatic insects and trying to match the best pattern to suit your needs. Anyway, let's get on the water. Okay, so here I am on the water. I found a nice little spot where there's a little bit of riffle and some good rocks. And what I do is in my sling pack, which is another good reason I like the sling pack over the vest, is I keep a little net like this. And I can find a lot of things with something like this and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so I got a nice little spot here. You have some nice, fast-moving water along some rocks here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my net right down the stream here. Literally just lift up some rocks. See what's in here. Ooh, nice. Ooh, there we go. There's some nice couple specimens here. Let's see what I get over here. There's a nice something. I'm gonna take a couple of these rocks. See, this is a good one right here, I think. Oh, yeah. I think there's had to be something in there. Oh, there's a crayfish. Excellent. So let's not forget about not only you have stuff, but you have crayfish that you could pull out. You know, in some places these things are great to fish with. So let's not forget about these. Okay, let's see what we got over here. Ooh. Nice, nice specimens on this. Okay, so just with a couple rock turns. Ooh, look at this. Perfect example. I'm just sitting here and this just landed on me. This could very easily fall in the water. So, just for the little turning, I caught all this stuff here. And that's quite a lot for some rock turns. Uh, very interesting insects. This little thing right here, I don't know what that is. That this, that thing right there is really cool. Uh, for those of you looking at this video, if you know what that is, let me know. Um, we have some of these here, stone flies. Those are massive. As you see, there's my finger next to it, so you see how big that is. So just to give you a little example, here I have one of my stone flies. This is a big stone fly, but if I put this sucker up to, next to it, you could see it's almost the same size. Let me flip it over. You got the same basic shape, same look. You got the tail, legs. But this is the kind of thing that you want to look for. You say, hey, look, I found these. So you throw this bad boy on, boom, that's what you got. Now, as you see, I could either go with also this kind of 
golden color stone fly. Where I go with this guy right here, it's a very similar, similar look as far as stone fly is concerned. Uh, both of these are Fletcher's flies. Um, same with this one right here. This one I got in Montana somewhere. But, I mean, you could even get away with something like this, you know? The profile is similar. Uh, color's a little different. If you're going with color and look overall, you're looking at this one or this one right here. Those two. Uh, let me show you some other things we found in here. Okay, so you notice this guy right here. This is some kind of, I'm guessing, a caddis larva is my guess. I'm not quite sure. Like I said, I know basic entomology uh, of the process of what they go through, but I'm not quite sure of exact uh, name of the species of each bug. But look at how bright green that is. Okay, so going with that general size. Now, if you notice, my fly box here, I carry a lot of green. Okay, and I'm looking for something that size you know, and I got some similar to that right here. Obviously this one is a little smaller, but you're getting the idea. I could probably get away with something like this right here, this fly. You see? The head's a little different color. The head is a different color here. Okay. Darker head. This is exactly what I mean by sometimes matching the hatch is not even a hatch. These things get dislodged all the time. And they go floating through the water column, completely helpless, because you can see he's not very a good swimmer. And it's just going to be bait. Like, for instance, this is a case. This thing is a, uh, a case larva where it makes a casing. Right here. Now, this thing clings to rocks and makes a casing for itself. It's a clinger. Now, look at that thing. This thing is a swimmer. And I don't know what it is, but it's very shrimp-like almost. Um, but you got different colors of, of larva here. For instance, this guy right here. It's another kind of caddis it looks like. I'm guessing, I don't know. Uh, if somebody on, somebody watching this video knows, please let me know. But, you know, you basically, you see the shape of this. Got a little bit of legs, general shape, general size. So, you know, you got a generalization of what's going on in here. You got a lot of stoneflies, big stoneflies. Like this guy, look at that. That is a massive stonefly. So you could probably throw one of those on. I would put on a massive stonefly on the top. Maybe, and here's another swimmer right here. This looks like another stonefly right here, but look how small this one is. So, you know, obviously the size ranges. This little swimmer right here is pretty awesome. Looks really cool. It's got a bunch of legs. Look at that. Looks really cool. Alien like. It's got a bunch of legs on the front and then like almost like a lobstery tail, but it's a fantastic swimmer. It's got three, three little t like tails in the back. I'm gonna look that up when I get home. But yeah, so here's like here here's a little medium size stone fly. So obviously you could put a range in there. From really big to really small. And I mean, to tiny, this little micro thing right here. This guy. 
Alright, so I'm going to hopefully try to demonstrate what a fly looks like going through the water. So I'm going to release some stone flies, hopefully catch them flying down. And the funny thing is, if we can't see them. I don't know how the hell these fish see him. Now this nymph only becomes visible about two feet away and literally goes by in 0.6 seconds, but you're still able to see a green tint to the caddis larva. Now here it is again in a quarter of the speed. But they do. So here we go right here. Perfect example of some stuff that you might want to throw. Now this is some kind of bee looking thing, but it's, you know, it's some kind of weird bee, but it's kind of green in color. There's a bunch of patterns that are very similar to that. You see right here, it's like Right alongside this, this water edge, things like this could easily fall in the water. Great for summertime. Look at this. Got some kind of mayflies here. That's great. Look, they're mating. So many of them over here on this water edge. Look at that. This is, this is the exact kind of thing I'm talking about you need to look for. There's a good shot of it right here. This is right alongside the water's edge. They're tan in color. Clear, look at, they're just all over this bank here. All over. They're mating, these two are at least mating. But just look at this, it's just covered. So you might want to throw something like this out there. Now, here's another tip that I could give you, and that's look for spider webs. You could see a lot of what's going on with spider webs sometimes. Go alongside the bank, if you see a spider web, you could kind of see maybe some of the insects that are around this area. This spider looks like it's already well fed, but here you go, here's an example. There's a nice little bug there looks like some kind of mayfly. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to get right in this fast water, put my net down, and just see what I could collect right on the surface. I'm literally just going to drag my net right along the top here, trying to do it right along this fast water here. It's exactly the kind of lane that a fish is going to be in right here. I'm just going to, just for a little bit. Alright. Oh, excellent. There's something in there. Alright, let's see what it is. Here you go. Here's... Oh, and look at that. Perfect. I'm glad that this happened. So while I was doing that, I caught some kind of nymph. Look at that. And that was right along that fast moving water. It's a little yellowy, yellowy nymph. Let's put him back in the water. And I have this little guy right here. Not sure what that is. But this is the kind of things I'm talking about. And this is what the trout are eating. Perfect example, there's a couple of dragonflies right there. Oh, there goes one of them. There's the other. So those are pretty big. That's another thing you can think about throwing. Some big dragonflies like that. Yep, there they go. So if you notice that the short little time that I did 
scoping out the stream and doing a little bit of recon noticed that there was some big stone flies and all the way up to small stone flies you could arrange it anywhere from sizes even 20 um, all the way up to I don't even know how big those other ones were eight or something um, really big ones uh, so my suggestion is maybe put something really big at the top and do a duo setup or a, a two nymph setup where you have another one attached and put a smaller one in the back. Uh, notice that they had some stone flies as well as some caddis larvae, so maybe you want to do like a stone fly at the top, caddis larvae in the back. I noticed also there were some small little mayflies, I think they're called sulfurs, I'm not sure, um, yellowish uh, mayflies flying around and they were all mating on the shoreline which was pretty awesome to see um, but these are the kind of things that you know just instead of going straight to the river or stream and just plopping right in the water take a little bit of time I mean looking on the side and you could notice a lot of things going on that you probably wouldn't have noticed otherwise and it can make all the difference in the world uh, for instance those tiny little yellow mayflies I would have never noticed if I didn't check out what was going on and was just walked along the streams looking at the side. Now to show you what I would use for those little mayflies, all right, so I probably use something like this little guy right here. It's got an indicator on it. It's like a parachute, but it's like a um, little foam piece on the top. But it's got the same rough size. It's got that nice yellowy look to it. And this would work really well, I think. As you see from my boxes, I got a wide, wide range of stuff here. Um, I got some, you know, small stone flies here, some medium stone flies. You saw that. Uh, let me get these out. In this other box here, I had the really big stone fly here. These two as well. This is um, another stone fly, stone fly. Then you got a little bit bigger and I mean a little bit smaller a little bit smaller I got some green um, pupa this would have worked well for that green pupa that I found here these you know super pupa or something you know you could find a lot of things that work so those are great for hatches and stuff like that emergery kind of things have some emergers some larva green can't go wrong with a pheasant tail that kind of imitates everything and I got you know everything from flashback pheasant tail to English pheasant tails I got bead head pheasant tails versus non bead head pheasant tails you know so uh, here's different sizes of some sulfurs that I have you know and I got them all the way down to some with um, parachutes some without I got these um, blue wing olive parachutes with the indicator and some blue wing olives just with the regular uh, rabbit's hair. Uh, can't go wrong with also some terrestrials here. I got some hoppers. For instance, these pink hoppers in Montana were just killer. Uh, I also got everything from brown to green, a little tan. That's a good thing to have because, you know, different. Uh, locations have different color hoppers. I got my different size caddis, a uh, wide range of caddis, and I got some bees imitations, some ant imitations. You know, this little ant imitation right here probably could do really well with that bee looking thing that I saw on those flowers. Uh, and you can't go wrong with a stimulator. You know, just some big wolf or royal wolf or, you know, I got some, obviously, some blue wing olive parachutes and stuff like that. I mean, the main thing you can learn here is be prepared. Uh, once you see what's in the water, uh, you better have something to match it. You know, like I said, matching the hatch doesn't necessarily mean you are matching a hatch. Sometimes the best match isn't a hatch at all, and that's the lesson to be learned today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode.